Hello everyone. So as all of you know, the patent agent examination was held on May 8 and I thought I should share my views regarding how the various questions of the patent agent examination were to be answered. So in this video, I'll be dealing with paper 2 and uh, provide my views regarding what could be the ideal answers for the various questions in paper 2. So the first question in part A requires you to provide the importance of prior art search before filing of a patent application and drafting of a specification. So here you would have to talk about uh, the prior art search enabling you to find out what is the scope of protection that is available to you. You can also talk about section 13 which uh, talks about anticipation and also about section 21J which talks about novelty and also about inventive stuff. In addition, in respect of drafting or specification, you can specify that this is required a prior art search would enable you to identify what is the background of the invention and you can make a case for what is already existing in the field of invention so question two relates to a specific situation wherein the inventor has already got a patent for a fish feed formulation and now she has realized that by addition of 10 percent by weight of coconut oil the formulation has enhanced properties so now you have to provide your advice regarding how do you go about covering or protecting the improved modified formulation? So this is a question of patent of addition. You need to tell your client that uh, there has to be an inventive step in uh, whatever addition or modification that you are making to the already existing invention, which is already covered in a patent and advice for filing of a patent of addition. So here the question already provides that the, the new formulation extends the disintegration time for fish feed pellets in water. And this could be qualified as an inventive step so as to be cons considered uh, as a subject ma material that is fit for filing of a patent of addition. In question 3, a uh, situation is provided where the applicant has already filed a patent application and he has received a first examination report and he finds out that there are many features of the invention that have not been disclosed in the specification at the time of original filing. So now you have to are required to provide him with what he can do to make voluntary amendments under Patents Act and there is a second part which requires you to uh, provide how that amendment could be made. So, what are the conditions that uh, govern the voluntary amendments that are being made? So, for the first part, what you can specify is you can mention about section 57 and read with rule 81 and how that voluntary amendment needs to be made in the specification using form 13. And also, you need to specify the applicable fee under schedule 1. Under part B, you need to specify what are the limitations that exist for the voluntary amendment. So, you have to discuss in detail section 59 and you have to provide an input that the amendments could only be made by way of correction or explanation so there has to be some material already existing and the newly added matter should not go beyond the scope of the original subject matter that has been provided so question 4 provides you with a situation where a provisional specification has already been filed and now they have made some further developments to the invention and uh, they want to cover that in a complete specification in pursuance of the provisional specification and they also want to add an inventor so you have to provide an answer to whether improvement can be included in the complete specification yes it can be done uh, you have to however specify section 11 which says that each claim of a complete specification would have a priority date associated with it so if a new subject matter is being disclosed in the complete specification it would have a priority date starting from the date of the complete specification so whatever ma material is already there in the provisional specification it would have the priority date of the provisional specification but in case you are adding some additional material in the complete specification it would have a new priority date which would be that of the date of the filing of the complete specification also it requires you to answer if the new inventor could be added while filing complete specification so under section 10 subsection 6 you have to file a form 5 uh, with a declaration of inventorship and you file a complete specification so when you are filing a complete specification you can include the name of the additional inventors and you can read form 5 which also provides for inclusion of the additional inventor so coming now to part b the, there are three questions that you need to answer and each is of 10 marks so this is an elaborative question so if you would have watched my earlier videos i had mentioned that the expected question in this uh, year's examination is uh, a hypothetical uh, hypothetical situation on startups and how to expedite examination for startups so here it is so in part a of question 5 you need to explain to the to the applicant who which is a, a startup that 
how he can expedite examination here you need to talk about rule 24c you can uh, mention about form 18a the applicable fee for that you also need to talk about form 28 wherein a declaration is to be provided that the applicant is a startup and also uh, because this is an expedited procedure you have to also intimate the startup about filing a request for early publication under form 9 because with, uh, without that the patent application would not be examined and the expedited process could not be followed subpart b deals with another question where they have already filed a request for examination you now are required to advise them regarding how that particular application could be expedited as well so here we are assuming that the applicant is the same startup for part b also and so here you need to talk about rule 24c sub rule 2 which talks about payment of a balance fee and here you need to pay a balance fee of 4000 because that is the uh, balance fee between the uh, ordinary request for examination and the expedited request for examination and also here you need to talk about form 18a again and form 9 if the patent application has already not been published so question 6 deals with another situation here we have a female inventor and applicant so this is very important here and she has developed an invention and in which for which she wants to file a patent application and you are required to provide the various important aspects of prosecuting a patent application so you can talk about section 9 starting with whether she could file a provisional application first and then follow it up with a complete specification or directly file a complete specification you need to inform her about section 6 as to who can file a patent application who would be the applicant then you can inform about section 7 talk about form 1 form 2 form 5 so under the new rule rule 24 c she being a female applicant could also pursue an expedited examination so you can talk about section 11 b talking about examination then go to rule 24 c explaining about the benefits that are available to female applicants and then explain her for form 18 a and the applicable fee and how to expedite the examination process then you also need to tell her about section 11 a which is publication talk about form 9 where you have to ask her to go for expedited publication this is also essential because for the expedited route you need to have the patent application published at the earliest then you also tell her about the examination process you need to talk about section 12 to 15 what are the requirements that are checked novelty inventive step industrial applicability and section 3 you need to explain her about the examination report that is issued the time limit for the response to be furnished section 21 which is the time for putting an application in order for grant then talk about hearing and then up to the step of grant of patent after hearing has been held question 7 deals with a situation where a company has filed a patent application with a specific composition for a and b that is being provided in the question paper then what has happened is in the examination the patent office has cited a prior publication which has similar composition in the sense the ingredients are same but the pesticide composition that is there in the prior art is a broader range while you have a very smaller range in the invention that is being uh, sought to be protected so the question requires you to provide your inputs regarding how would you respond to the fir so here what you need to say is there is a specific range that has been specified in the patent application that is sought for protection and what that does is this specific composition helps you achieve an improved result and as has been shown so it says that the improved composition that is provided in the patent application not only mitigated worms but also improved the flowering rate so this is an improvement over what is already known in the prior art based on this you can say that my invention is innovative over the already known prior publication so part b of question 7 requires you to answer how would you include examples evidencing the increase in flowering rate so as to support your arguments you can uh, do it under section 57 by way of explanation so you are only explaining the technical effect by way of adding examples you will have to file a form 13 and you have to explain the entire process or during the prosecution you can always come way to the examiner that this is how it has been done how the examples are supporting the technical effect and if the controller requires or the examiner requires you to include that in the specification you can include it in the specification but again i believe for that you will need to file a request under section 57 so coming to part c which deals with drafting uh, questions uh, i'm i'll not deal with these questions in detail because uh, you can go and watch my videos regarding drafting of uh, claims and drafting of complete specification i'll just provide a brief idea regarding how this could have been solved so part c1 requires you to provide an, a title draft an abstract and draft two claims for the invention so i'm not dealing with the with the chemistry in innovation because that is not my field i'll deal with the innovation relating to the electronic uh, mosquito racket 
right so this is an electronic mosquito racket provided with a flexible handle as you will read through it you'll find out that this is what is intended to be done so what i have done is i have marked as the prior art and problem in the prior art this is just for your reading because otherwise you are not required to specify or make a complete specification so this is what i believe could be a good title because this innovation relates to a mosquito racket with flexible handle then i have marked the few essential features and you can talk about that in claim one so you then claim one obviously would be an electronic mosquito racket and you will define the frame body the grip and the shaft obviously the chart shaft is flexible so that's what is the important feature the other thing is i have marked few dependent claims also where you can talk about what is the shaft being made of and also uh, that the shaft houses an electro electrical circuit so these could be the two dependent claims so if if you see you you have made one independent claim relating to the electronic mosquito racket and then you define the features of the shaft in the dependent claim there could be other dependent claims also i am this is just an example that i am taking so part c2 additionally requires you to make a complete specification also along with the claims and title so here this is the question 10 relates to a pet bottle container which is made of a specific antimicrobial uh, material so this is i have marked these are the prior arts that have been defined and what's the background of the inno innovation so you can al always see from here what are the problems existing in that this statement from here the innovation starts here they are explaining to you what the innovation is all about that there is an antibacterial molded product of polyethylene terephthalate so that is the innovative aspect of the of this question so i have marked all these uh, features so after reading through the specification i could think of a title as a as a hygienic pet bottle container or maybe a pet bottle container having antimicrobial properties and then uh, i have defined what could be the independent claim so one independent claim could be relating to the bottle body container which has a bottle body and the lid and there are different features of the bot a bottle body as well as lid uh, which i have marked in red then i have also marked few dependent claims that you could use for this particular claim there is also a second independent claim that you can make which relates to a method of manufacturing the bottle body so here the different steps are provided so this is how you can make different claims so as i've marked you can make two independent claims and then there could be two dependent claims of the bottle body so these are my views on how you could have solved the question paper there this is there is no right or wrong way of doing it in case you have any questions please put them in the comments box and i'll be happy to answer those till then goodbye